fabulous shop. <laughs> Hello and welcome. Q Sports International and Predator Group present the Pro Billiard Series here in Michigan. It's the Michigan Open. Third event of the year will culminate in the Predator World 10 Ball Invitational this coming March in Las Vegas. This is day two. 64 players began playing 10 ball. Two or three races to four. Shootout if tied. Uh, winner, winner breaks, three foul rule, 30-second time clock, $75,000 in prize fund, and a 22-5 first prize. This is a one-loss side, round two. The loser is out, and the winner needs to win one more for the final stage. This is George Teichan in the booth with Eric Orlifson. Eric, we've got a great match. Definitely, and lots of pressure. Loser goes home. Really tough match for early on in the tournament. Sure. Alex lost in a shootout yesterday. Roberto lost to the tough one in the first round of Max. Yeah, that was a heartbreaker, too. Yeah, they both played good. Yeah. Yep. Well, this is race to four. Roberto has won the lag, so he will break first. Just crushes the rack. One ball came off three rails in the opposite side pocket. Ten balls over the corner pocket here. Nothing really near it where you'd call an early combo. Neither of these players are a stranger to this format. Roberto has has a played he's third he was third in Arizona, second in Michigan right here, second in Ohio twice, and fifth in Puerto Rico. He's been spending a lot of time playing one pocket and he just got behind the six. Can you tell by his body language if, if he has the edge there? He's kind of shrugging his, shro his shoulders like he does. And um, I can't tell from his body language, but I looking at the table, I don't think he's got a shot. He's got a kick at it. I think maybe even he's thinking the bigger problem is even if he makes it, cue ball's going the wrong way. For the four, the exactly. Four. And if he hits the top side of it, depending on how he hits it, he might get safe using the 6-9 if he hits the top side of the three or the far side of the three as we look at it but uh right now he's concerned with the shot clock he looked at it three times yeah cue ball's kind of tracking towards the side pocket yeah. here if he hits the top side of exactly. it exactly well it wasn't all so bad the nine ball may have the three ball blocked yeah it does <clears throat> no option to get back for the 10 as well Ten's looming large in this rack. These guys have met seven times before, and Alex has a little bit of an edge, four to three, in their seven matches that they've played. Very close in Fargo, right? Sure. Within 15 points, I would think. Uh, Alex is 813. Roberto is, I believe, 790 and change. 792? 792. Yeah. Okay, close enough. Tough to call a yep, winner. Yeah, 20 points. Yeah. What do we call that? One good shot, one good roll right. makes the difference. I think they've from the loser's side, is one bad shot. One, you think? Yeah, they've both had success in, in Predator Pro Series in the past. Alex has won one. Roberto's definitely been in the final. He's been in two, uh, three finals. Wow. He's second. Always a bridesmaid, never the bride. That's a well thought out safety. Yep. He'll come back with a safety trying to put the cue ball behind the eight, probably, I would think. Oh, wait a minute. Look at this 10 ball hanging in the pocket. Yeah, I can't But he it. doesn't have a shot at it, Yeah, does he? can't hit it up with the yep. three to get, no. the, to get the three back near the 10. It's going to go three rails here back behind the eight. Tough shot because he's on the rail. 
caught it a little thin. I think he, well, the nine ball is going to help. Yeah. Didn't get behind the eight, but he got behind the nine. Well, I think he'll be calling the nine here. Or, pardon me, the ten. The ten with a kick shot. Yeah. I agree. Unless he can, he can thin it. Unless he can thin it and try to carry him the ball. Yeah, it's is it that thin? It's that. Th it's got to be that thin. It's a kick. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree with the kick. Be a quick game. Good contact on his three, and it could be over. But oh, it's got other, hands. No, oh, look at the speed there. he hit it with. He hit it with excellent speed. Now he's going to use the other two balls to block it. Right. Mm -hmm. This. You're going to definitely have to draw the cue ball off the three. I feel like you could get enough draw that you can get the cue ball back into the ten. That's exactly what I was going to ask you. I was going to say, you think he can hit that side rail and go into the three with a lot of draw and maybe get into the ten? Mm -hmm. He's got nothing to lose. I'm just looking if he's actually gonna even going to draw it. If he's not drawing it, he's a bigger favorite to make it. Well, he's using the outside English. Oh, there he it is. He used the spin. Yep, he used uh, the pardon spin. Pardon me, not the spin. The spin and speed. Yeah. The, the, so that's what, that's kind of similar to the shot that, um, I don't know if you remember, Anton Raga had when he tried to play the, the ball off another off ball the, in, near the end of the match. I remember very well. I set it up like 15 times. Right. So, <laughs> so I, I think, you know, Students of the game now know it's, it's not a shot that comes up a lot, but the harder you hit that ball, the more it's, it's going to take. Yeah, exactly, the more it's going to take. So it was funny. I didn't. I didn't even think of it at first. I was thinking about drawing it, but he used the speed more to make the uh, he, cue ball come back off the three. It was a great shot. He also used a lot of left English on the shot, so it was away from the ball, and the speed and the and the English brought it back over. Kind of coming yeah, a little thicker exactly. at it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was a great shot by Roberto. For win game number one in a race to four. Yeah, Gomez lost to Max Lechner in the opening, as you mentioned earlier. And then he had a forfeit from Donald Adams. So he's only played one match. And he's in his uh, actually third match. But he needs to win this one and then one more to get to the final 16, stage two. The one ball I thought was tracking pretty well, but there goes the three. Is it going to get there? He's there. Shot on the one. Super thin cut on the one. So thin that I think he's going to back off of it. You can play the one behind the five, ten, nine stack. Cue ball up table. If you're just tuning in, the last two, the last time these two guys played each other was at uh, the U.S. Open 10 ball at Griff's in Las Vegas, and Roberto beat Alex 9-7. to seven. Look at that shot. Stayed aggressive there, cut it in. Got Tra trapped on the cue ball, where the cue ball is traveling right now. If you hit it absolutely perfect, you could come between the 9 and inside the 6. Oh, pardon me, he's actually he's uh, straight enough to draw it. Yeah. yeah, you think he's trying to play it off the eight? If he, if he nibbles the eight, the cue ball goes up to the four with draw, like that. Oh, towards the side, though. Yeah. That's but, unlucky. Uh, I like the sneaking there, though. I thought that might work. I thought he might use the rail, hit it real thin, catch the, catch the, uh, the eight. Eight just real yeah. thin and catch the rail and go up. Towards the four ball. There's a 5-10 combo possibility here, but it's too tough to judge. So he's going to come three rails into the angle on the six. Once the five is gone, the tough tough work in the rack is, that is, has been done. Overhit the speed by a lot, and he's gonna get behind the eight. Oops. Even to the point where it's tough to kick at this ball. I feel like you have to go all the way up table. Could consider tying something up, but not really, because you can only the. Oh, he's got the side rail. <clears throat> and actually. A low percentage chance of carrying carrying the ten in here too. Very low. 
Uh oh. Lost the cue ball. Bit of an ominous start here for Kazakis. He's got to watch it. Kind of tied up to 6 8. But he's he's handy here with a, he'll take care of business here with the cue ball. I think running into the to. eight. If he has room, he might not, but he I'm pretty sure you you called it. Okay. If there's room to get in and out of there, I think he'll leave the eight alone. Yeah. Okay, so he's looking at that. Yeah. I yeah, he's yeah, that's what he's looking at. There's always less danger in moving the ball in moving anything. Yeah. Cue ball's barely gonna miss the eight on the way out here, but he knows the he knows the shape of the shot. Gonna make it come straight across. There you go. Nice couple nice little touch plays there. Right in line here and breaking the third rack. So it looks like he's just gonna have to elevate here. He'll be okay. Yeah. Looks like Gomez's strategy with with the hand rack um, is just hitting them at real high speed, and that and that that's always been an asset that he, he's had in his game, being able to hit the break hard. And I think it's shown up over the course of a lot of these Predator Pro mm -hmm. series where he's getting so much movement out of the rack that likely more often than not he's he's gonna make a ball. Yeah, he's had good success with these. I mean, three seconds, a fifth in Puerto Rico, and that was a big one. And he's ranked fifth in the Predator Pro Billiard Series rankings uh, where they use the Fargo and their tournament results okay. to get points for each tournament result or whatever they do in each tournament. Who's number one there? Federhorst. Okay. Uh, Kazaki's is number seven. And Kazaki's has played eight events where um, Gomez has played 10. He's played so, them all, pretty much, I guess. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, pretty close. Yeah, he's been at, uh, I think he's been at every one. Well, he's living in the in the States now, right? right. And, he's at Bogies in uh, Houston. Yeah. And uh, I was doing commentary with one of the top commentators that gets a lot of recognition. Um and uh, it tells me he's just amazed the spots he gives at the room there. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can imagine. He says he gives up such weight that, that you just wouldn't believe it. He, he just outruns the outruns it all the time. Like just for practice, kind of? Just so, so people no, will for play money. Him. Yeah, well, I understand. Well, of course, but, but yes, exactly. Because yeah, like people just want to play him yeah. and playing kind of pretty cheap and stuff. And some of the uh, weight he gives up is just astronomical. Hmm. Gomez, a well-liked player. Mr. Superman on the back of his shirt there. I put it right in the middle of my chest. Mm -hmm. Big break. Ball's flying everywhere. Didn't make one this time, though. See, where you got, you guys probably listen are all from the from the Christopher Reeves generation of Superman. I still remember Steve Reeves. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> Are they related? Yes. Huh. Bro not brothers? Or is this his You know, dad? I, I think it's his dad. Okay. And they're not brothers because Steve Reese is pretty old. Got him good here. He's going to have to go to the kick to a long rail first. You know, folks, we're at, we've got some new data that we can use to uh, uh, inundate you with numbers. And uh, provided by the pool stats guy. Yeah, the kick was so tough there. He chose this just to tie something up. For example, uh, Roberto has made 12 balls, missed zero, and fouled once. Alex made one ball and fouled once. Going for a three foul play here. He's also going to try to play the one into the seven ten area where he opens that up. Didn't quite get into the seven ten, but took away the easiest rails again. Actually, might have a 
alleyway between the two five where he can hit the one a, lo a lot easier. He does. That's a little unlucky for Kazakis there. Be calling the one in the bottom left corner. Again, low percent chance to actually make it, but in case he does, he'll be, he'll be wanting to stay at the table. Look, two balls randomly there. Didn't leave a shot. I think Alex is going to take some kind of shot at a safe here. Could try to play the cue ball behind the four off the long rail. Back into the short rail behind it. Cue ball might be tracking towards the four too much. Could get really aggressive and play the combo as well. Uh, always, he, was, he yeah. was playing safety all the way behind the five. Yeah, always tricky when you're trying to draw a safe like that. But I think the problem with my shot is that cue ball was running into the four. He's got enough of the two to pocket it here. And the progression of that is that the seven, eight, ten stack is going to open up. He could go on the right side of the deuce and come back behind the eight, ten. No, he went right for the ball. Nice shot. I thought he might play, be playing safe there. Could have. Good shot. Open, opened up the problem area sure. in the rack. Had a chance to bring the cue ball back to the four. Did that pretty much perfectly. I think the eight passes in both pockets, which will help him a little bit. He can avoid the ten. He shoots the eight in the same pocket as the six. Playing at good pace here. Won the first three games in about 10 minutes. Pretty sure the eight ball goes by the 10, so it's just a follow, long shot, and then getting on the 10. Probably going to be a diagonal draw, two rails, from the 9 to the 10. This is a shot that comes up all the time in rotation, and a shot that you should be practicing. There's many drills that... You can set up that'll help you practice this shot. I'm just going to come out to the middle here, draw two rails, and then two rail diagonal back to the 10. Got a little further away from it than he would like, but maintained a pretty good angle to play that draw shot. As Bert Kinister might say, just cross the center of the table. Can't scratch. You ever heard of Bert Kenister? For sure. Awesome. Yeah. Met him in Wisconsin. The pioneer of drills and talking like a coach kind of in yeah. North I don't America. Care. I don't care who you are. You're hitting them balls too hard. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's yeah. one of his biggest ones. And like you said, there's game number three. Gomez won a tournament in um, Grand Rapids last weekend. I was there, actually. Yeah. Bar table nine ball tournament. Our apartment didn't win. Ro Roland Garcia won the tournament. Roberto finished fourth. Yeah, he's been playing a lot of one pocket and having a lot of success, too. His game's come up quite a bit. I think they're still underrating him in one pocket, but he keeps winning. So at some point, they're going to they're gonna realize he's <laughs> right near the top. Well, I think in one pocket, you have certain people that keep thinking they're like the top player in the world still. Uh-huh. And, and there are quite a few that just aren't out there all the time. Yeah, Shane always surprises people when he goes and plays a one-pocket tournament. I think it's another underrated one-pocket Oh, player. very. You, I think he's so underrated. Yeah. I think he moves. He just moves differently than most uh, standard one-pocket players or, you know, typical one-pocket players. Ability to make big shots if he has to. Sure. It's awesome to watch. And Roberto plays along those same lines. I believe that, yeah. Hitting him good, hitting him nice and square. 
Zach's just got to start now. Kazakis can kind of start slowly sometimes, but he's got a good year. Oh, of course. He'll catch up pretty quick. One of the most experienced players on tour. World Pool Master in 2021. Runner up in Turning Stone in 2022. He's been on the Moscone Cup, what, uh, 2019, 2020? Two passes the four here. He's okay. A little tough to see from our angle. He knows it's close as well. Way he's looking at the table. I think he is okay to shoot the two past the four. He's actually going to go side. Hmm. Side's okay too. Tougher, tougher pocketing overall, but he's obviously choosing the side because of the two doesn't pass enough of the four. Oh, nice nibble off the corner there. Now he's got to play side again. This time he's going to have to draw it to the side rail, head rail, and come underneath the four for the corner pocket, I think. Yeah, I think the natural angle is lying to the, just... to the right of the cor left corner pocket. So I mm -hmm. think, oh, you're right. He's going with the draw. Yeah, he, he might be trying to draw, stay underneath the side pocket there with the draw. Uh huh. There's two ways to play this. Oh, he went just like I noted. You're right. I thought he might go with running English, the right hand English, and go around All the floor. All the way around yeah, it. Yeah, I like that. He knows he has to play offense here. He knows yeah. he's stuck three games in the rack. If if he was up three games or if the score was closer, he might consider safe, but he knows he has to try to make something happen, so he's going to try to bank the four in here. Well, he's looks long. overshot that and given up a shot. It's a thin cut. Cue ball's going to track right at that side pocket. Have to be careful with it. Yeah, I can play some right spin on it and mm. swing it more to the side rail. Small concern if he hits the side rail, the cue ball can end up behind the six, but he'll be playing it to try to get, I don't know, maybe long of the six, in between the six, nine. It's kind of tracking right at the six. I, it, it would be lucky to land right behind it, but it is a concern. I think that's the only shot, though. I mean, you can't get into it enough to... Yeah. The, the other way out of it would be, you know, you power draw it around three rails tight of the five, but you're too close to the rail, and the cue ball's too far away from it. I totally agree. Shot. He's got he's, he's got to gamble here a little bit uh, with that side pocket. Mm -hmm. But that six bob is probably more of a concern. Yeah. Just got inside it. He's good. Draw the cue ball back over, play the six in the same pocket, and real quick first set here. Roberto's looking good. He's got to. Yeah, He's for on sure. The one lost side, he doesn't want to go home. Well, that and playing a tough opponent, too. And sure. If you think about the mistakes Alex made, it had that one three rail forward playing to, towards the five, he overhit it, but not much else. Draw straight back to the side here. Draw and right spin. Ooh, got it. Didn't caught it a little thin. Didn't get enough draw out of it. Still got an option in the left corner, but you can see the head shake there. You didn't expect to be anywhere near this tough on this shot. I think you can quite draw it enough to get on the side of the table that he's playing on side rail. Just got to go past the side. Cue ball's going to be tracking towards the nine a little bit, but still there. Nice shot. Didn't want to hit the nine, but it ended up okay. It's on the rail here. He might have to run into the 10. 
If he can miss the 10 inside it, he'll definitely try to. He might just move that 10 ball up a little bit like that and have it for the side. Yeah, I think he might have tried to go inside it, but... Uh, I think he actually played it that way. Yeah, sure, just kick it towards yeah. the side. Yeah, kicked it up. It was natural. As long as you didn't hit it too full and not too hard. Strong set from Gomez there. Anytime you blank your opponent 4-0 and your opponent is Alex Kazaki's, that was a strong set, strong showing. You know, in this Kellogg Arena, we got some nice uh, spectator seating and the whole, this whole side behind us here. Yeah, it's stadium seating. Stadium seating, that's right. 69 uh, seven-foot tables here for the Michigan State Open, and we're going to go for a little break. We'll be right back. And we are back. The referee racking the balls for Mr. Gomez and Mr. Kazakis. Uh, Mr. Kazakis will be breaking as he lost the lag and Gomez broke first. That means that he's entitled to break the balls first, the second set. But in winning the lag, if this goes to a shootout, Roberto Gomez has the choice to go first and which pocket he wants to shoot at. Choice of pockets. Kazaki's to break. We haven't seen him break yet. And no, we I, haven't. Yeah, I I saw him uh, play a match yesterday, and he was choosing to go from the middle, which is the more offensive break. See how things turn out here. In fact, we only shot we only saw him up uh, eleven times in the past set. Made the ball behind the one in the side. And will the seven move? No, it doesn't. Bunch of balls jammed up by the bottom right corner pocket here. Gonna hit the left side of the one and avoid the scratch. Cue ball ideally tracking behind the four. Tough shot, very touchy, but Eric, would you consider banking this one ball to the lower left hand corner pocket? Maybe, but does it go by the six? Yeah, it should go by the six. Yeah, I think the, I think the issue with that is you're not gonna have much left on the two. So might as well just play safe on the one. I think he's worried about the cue ball coming too tight, not not getting long enough behind the four. Now the if if he banks it. If he banks it, of course, cue ball is probably going to track three rails right towards that six ball. Mm -hmm. So the eight ball's in the way for a pot for a pocket. He's going to try to hold it. It looks I like. I think yeah, play the cue ball behind the seven yeah. or draw. 
Ah, not here. He used the six ball. He can make it. Definitely. If yeah, rail first. Rail first. Sure. And that's going to track the cue ball over to that five ball stack by the right corner pocket. See if he backs off and tries to shoot the two in the long pocket. He did back off for sure, even the two in the side. He just oh. taught me something there. With the inside English coming off that rail instead of running English, I always use running English on those shots. And the in inside English checked it perfectly for the side pocket. I noticed that as well, yeah. Yeah, the intuition there is definitely to hit it with running, but mm -hmm. he wanted to slow the cue ball down, so he hit it with inside. Nice shot. Ooh, tough. I like Roberto's idea of getting through the whole rack. I mean, if Alex was able to bring the cue ball back to the exact same spot right now and just kind of play the same plan that Roberto had, that could work. He's going for the other I don't. I like going for the other pocket, but I like what he did here. He was playing safe two ways. Or yeah. was he playing safe all the way? I'm, I think he was trying to make it, um, yeah. run into that area, and ideally develop something that he could run the whole rack. But he had a two-way element in yeah. mind for sure. When I watched him aim it and aiming to the right side of the deuce, I thought, well, you know, I, I like going the other way and coming around, but uh, his way was just as effective, if not more so, uh, with the inside English. Right. He has enough to, again, he has a win. Oh, no, he's just going to tie up. So he's going to be in a bet real bad spot on the next shot, even though this ball is tied up, but he's just kind of, I don't think the, f he's a little bit upset with it, but I don't think the four goes. It doesn't. Left to carom, but again, it's tough to control the four off that. He's looking at all his options here, and he's got to think quick. Looks like Kazak is just thinking offense. He knows he's stuck a set. He knows he hasn't won a game yet. And he's going to try to make something happen offensively. And I don't mind that game plan mm -hmm. overall. Well, uh, how much do you think it weighs knowing that uh, Gomez plays three cushion, Gomez plays everything on the table. So sure. his kicking abilities and, you know, ball striking abilities are very, very high. That's oh, a great comment. And, and, and generally when you see these world-class players play each other, they're going to lean toward the more offensive side. Like you never want to leave, you never want to let a world-class opponent get back to the table, right? So, you know, conversely, if you're, if you're just playing in the, in your uh, average player in the pool room, you want to lean towards more towards defense, but with these guys, you know they can do everything. They're 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 going to hit the ball more often. They're going to jump it in sometimes. So you got to kind of take your chances and be a little more, bit more aggressive overall. I think. Totally agree. Uh, your opponent can't hurt you in the chair. Interesting shot. Didn't see that. Got the cue ball going a little bit the wrong way here, and you can see this. Slight head shake where he wanted to be on, have the cue ball tracking to the right. I think he can follow this ball. Good, but the 810 line's pretty big if he starts following it. Uh, once he hits that side rail, he's going to go right around the 810 unless he's drawing it. Yeah. Yeah, got into a small zone there. Yep. He's got the option to go up table now, unless he got really straight. I feel like the cue ball is tracking slightly to the left. A little bit of running spin. Might not even need it. Straight high might be okay. Uh, he used that running spin you were talking about. That little shoot every shot with a touch of inside. Yeah. Who says that? Captain CJ. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to draw this one two rails just to be able to hit it a little more aggressively. You can, the one rail track would work okay as well, but on a tough pocketing angle like that, you want to hit it as, as aggressively as you can. Two rail track made the 
line of the cue ball a little bit longer. Just going to draw out one rail here. Draw on left. Could have used a little bit more on that. Yeah, it caught it a little thick, so we lost a little bit of energy in the cue ball. It's okay to follow this one. It's short of a scratch. Smallest concern of the cue ball going two rails and scratching the corner, but he'll probably under hit that speed. Missed Whoa, it. so you know what? Just the, having to under hit the speed a little bit got Austin. him there. I understand why he did it. You know, the cue ball was tracking towards the corner, but he just had to let up, kind of put that little half speed stroke on it, and that can get you overall. Missable shot, but it's still a very makeable shot. Yeah. He'll hit shy of the side pocket. He missed it too. Oh, wow. he didn't miss it. He just used every bit of the pocket bounced off both sides and fell right in. So the cloth is still new enough that you're going to still have those balls fall. Sure. In, in the last shootout, um, they might. Uh, they, did you see how they kind of rattled like three? And uh, her opponent, um, gosh, fan. Yeah. And uh, they both, uh, Christina's two of her shots, their first two shots, just rattled. This uh, It looked like they were going to stay up. But and, and one of fans did as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was interesting to watch. I mean, that was exciting to watch more than anything. Well, Kazakis has to dig deep here. Speaking of shootouts, uh, in the first 32 matches that we had yesterday, there was... Uh, seven shootouts, which included the closing on the. Oh, that was actually. Uh, uh, was that a winner's round? That was a winner's round match last night at 8 o'clock. It was, yeah. yeah. And, so. th and that's actually how Kazakis got to the loser yeah. side. That was the last match yep. of the night, and Petzer ended up beating him in an extended shootout. Right, they were back there in the back, and uh, that was a good shootout. They were backed up to the final diamond there on the table and took quite a few shots at it. Big crunch and break big. again. Fluked one. Yeah. Oh, look at this break. Yeah, straight in on the one. Straight in on the one and everything is open. Three to the four could be s small challenge, but I'm sure he'll manage it. I like. I kind of like getting on the left side of the table for the three and bringing the cue ball two rails around to the opposite side of the table for the four. Let's play a straight back draw here that leads you into the left side of the table for the three ball. He's surprised where he pointed his cue there. He's going between the four and the five, it looks like. Not sure. Just a I, yeah. high, little bit of a high ball here. I like drawing it and just avoiding all that. Going to the area. seven. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was able to feel the angle. Just got, he got closer to it, which is an advantage for sure. I think he's still going to play the same. I guess you could follow up one rail to try to get the cue ball near the 5-7. Got a little straight, so I think it lies better for that shot a little more. It does. He'll just come up and leave the cue ball right where the bridge is. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's going to play it to the side. Mm -hmm. Interesting choice. He's into the angle there. He's moving the cue ball less. Yeah, the cue ball's going right into the seven. Pretty close. Shows that he's not afraid to pocket a bit of a tougher shot. I mean, if you're feeling confident, that's, that's no problem, you know? Yeah, he's playing a lot of pool, so he should feel pretty confident. Playing a lot of pool, having a high rate of success. I'm 
want to have that undercut a little bit, but I mean, he fooled us there, and that was obviously the problem of shooting the four in the side, right? And uh, I guess he just decided to pl play the, you know, the potting track a little more than the positional track. I told you yesterday, I can't stand side pike. My cue ball would have been where the bridge was, up by the seven, had to shot that right towards the seven for the four ball. I feel like it might have not cut as much as he wanted, like just a small skid. Saw saw a real bad one in the last match. Oh, the skids? Yeah, yeah. just just one, but it, it happened to be the 10 ball to make it hill-hill in the first set. Was it you and I that saw one, the yeah. real bad one on, on to this right-hand corner? Yep. Yesterday? Yep. yep. Well, this is what Alex needs to send us to a shootout. Doesn't want Roberto to run away with it. He's got to get on the board and start there, right? Yep. First game. He's got to get that. Got a little funny bit here, but he's okay to come two rails to the left side of the table into the angle. It's perfect. A little too much angle. Can power draw out of it. I don't think he needed all that spin. Just a little high, he still goes to the side rail and comes out better for the side. Yeah, seven. he had to miss the eight coming off yeah. the short rail, but Got more angle than he wanted. Nice hit. And draw this one around three rails. Understand here for the viewers at home, this would never be a two rail play or never be one rail just off the short rail and float it back. You always want to come back into the angle and the end of the angle play here is drawing the ball three rails. Over to the left, cushion on, yeah. cushion on the left. Just like that. Yeah, like Ender hit the speed there, but he was targeting the third rail. And just what the doctor ordered for Alex Kazakis is win number one. To tie things up, one apiece in the second set, and he's looking at his the only thing he can do is send us to a shootout. And that's the last thing he wants to do. He didn't have any success on this table on his shootout last night. Yeah, body language looks like he's struggling a little bit. I mean, he could be just tired for whatever reason. You know, obviously the match hasn't gone his way so far, but this is where you got to dig deep in these spots. He's going, he's breaking from the middle, so he is breaking in where offensive things can happen. He actually did make a ball behind the one straight back in the side on his first break. Breaking, he's one of the first players I've seen break from the middle so far. He's pretty much the only, been, one yeah. of the only ones I've seen. I've seen them all break from the side. Which is a big, you know, change from uh, last year or the year before that. There goes a seven. No, it's not. Good snap Open. on that one. Hit it square. Just didn't end up how he wa how he wanted. Five eights tied. If he does get the cue ball over, he can pocket the eight or the five in the same pocket as the one. Bit of work to do before that though. Coming into the angle here. Tough to call this one. I mean, there's enough room for the two to pocket past the six, but I think he might just back off and play the cue ball behind the 6-10. It's awfully tight. I'm right down the, right down it. And he didn't want to take any chances. He would have had to slid it off the corner. Yeah, he got him on all the easy rails here, but he can kick to the second rail. So he's going to go short rail, long rail. Take a low percentage chance at making the two in the corner. I like hitting this kick with a little more speed. That that corner of the side, bottom corner of the side pocket is so, so big at this angle. Yeah, it could happen. 
You know, you think how it doesn't stick out, but if you get up there and look at it, a nice hit. He made the made ball. It. Great shot. Big shot. Our referee uh, smiles. If he can slow the cue ball down to the point where he stays on the left side of the table and holds the cue ball before the 10, the natural angle is going to play good to come back towards the 5 where he needs to get the cue ball in a small area for, to pocket the 5. Couldn't quite hold it, so he had to go into the 6-10. He barely got a shot, and he, and he has an angle to come back over to the left side. He's actually down on it, making sure. Looks to me like he has enough room. Following a bit of right spin here. Oh, draw, even better. He just draw it straight back into the angle you want. Draw angle was playing. A, was going to play a little long. Overhit the speed a bit, but guaranteed himself some kind of shot. Doesn't have to worry about position on the six. Six is dressing up nicely over the side. Called for his extension here. He knows this is a tough, tough shot to pocket. Big spot in the match. Oh, cue ball. That, that was odd. The cue ball just kind of pushed right through the eight. You would always expect the cue ball to kind of just stay in the area that where, after, where the eight was, but it caught it at right in the center of the angle of the eight and just pushed through it. Also pushed right off the corner of the pocket as it hit went in. I saw that. I thought yeah. that was going to hang, and it just kind of slid in anyway. Mm. It had what that it had some of that going in English. Right. <laughs> just going to take the eight in the long pocket here rather than risk the movement from the seven to the eight. I mean, Gomez looks in dead stroke. Easy to say when your opponent's faltering a little bit, but just kind of his body language around the table. He has a bit of pop in his step, you know. He looks mm -hmm. confident. He looks the most comfortable at the table, too. Alex looks a little, uh, uh, I don't want to say out of sorts. He just not real happy to be there. Yeah, I mean, maybe he's even carrying the loss from last night with him still because he had a chance to close out the second set. It's a day later, you know. But short memory. Got to have a short memory. For sure. But all of a sudden, you know, things start going badly for you in the, in the next match. And it's, and it's like it's tough to tough to stay positive sometimes. I think Alex has more ups and downs than most top players too. When he's when he's playing well, he's capable of winning. He's a great player. He knows all the shots. A lot of experience. His low end could be a little bit lower than some of the very top players. Mm -hmm. Well, so far this set, Roberto leads two games to one. He's had uh, 16 shots to Alex's 20. He's made 13. Missed two, fouled once. Alex has actually made more balls this set so far, but he's down two to one in the score. Crossed over the rack a little bit there. Most of the balls that Gomez are, is making 
seem to be just tracking into the side pocket. <clears throat> Not straight in, just fluking into the side. But when you hit them that hard, you know, chances of making something are pretty high. Just looking at tracking the cue ball between the two six here, trying to hide the cue ball between the two four ten stack. I like that play. I mean, it's a tight window. You could overrun it if you don't hit the speed right. But you're playing the one safe at the same time. Opted to play the one down there. Good shot. He left Fair. a one rail kick yeah. here. Fairly easy kick. Just how hard, how thick can you hit this one ball? Yeah, so the one get a rail. Yeah, so the one's playing into the ten a lot of the time, which is not not overall. It's not going to lead to good outcomes. It's too tough to try to kick the one between the six ten. Yeah. Maybe even try to play it on the thinner side, but then the one just kind of opens up to the right of the six. Well, he plays it. He plays it real thin. It might go to the rail and back, back behind those balls. Behind again. the, the cue ball could could yeah. go back to where it is now. Right. That's that's similar to the shot I was thinking yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. It was actually a tough it's spot. Been, it was because if you hit it thick, the, the cue balls are the ones going to hit the ten. If you hit it thin, this is going to happen a lot of the time. If you try to maintain cover with those balls, you're not going to catch a rail. That too. Yeah, he was in a tough spot there. Good safety by Roberto. I think he's going to try to run into the two here. He's so thin, it's tough to slow the cue ball down. Can't really draw it. It did. Took a little gamble on where the two in the cue ball were going to end up, but he had to. Pocketing angle for the corner here isn't great. Cue ball is tracking towards the side. If anything, it might go a little bit past the side, which is moving towards the three. And see, the players are always aware of the shot clock. You know, they're, they've played on the under these shot clock conditions so much that it's almost like they're getting, a, yeah. it's a part of their pre-shot routine. They're kind of looking where they're at. They know that how long it takes them to set up, and, they, and they're feeling how long it's actually going to take to beat the shot clock. Tough shot. You know, in nine ball, a lot of the, a lot of the, Positional tracks are more obvious, and even a lot of the safes are more obvious. But in ten ball, to be playing under a thirty-second shot clock, I mean, I, I'm not knocking it. You know, I think I think it's good to keep the game moving, right? But there's a lot of spots where, you know, the solution isn't as obvious as quickly, right? But right. you have to learn how to deal with that. And it's also how funny how funny it is with that. With just one extra ball on the table, how more congested everything seems to be. Mm -hmm. Big thing about ten balls: a lot of the balls end up in the middle. You know, and when the balls end up in the middle of the table, a lot more variables come up. When the balls are on the rail, you kind of just play the cue ball through the middle of the table, you know, play the balls, pocket the balls along the rail. There's more room to move around. But when the balls are in the middle, a lot of different situations come up. He's left a, he's left a shot here for Alex. Might play a big draw, trying to avoid the four. He can also hit the four and start tracking the cue ball back towards the three. I don't think he's going to try to follow it. I think it's yeah. I think you you called it. I think he's drawing this ball off the four. Careful side pocket. You would try to draw it enough that you don't hit the four, but you're right. The, the cue ball will be tracking towards the side. Nice shot. Can't get there. It's not getting the extra roll in this match. Couldn't play the cube or the three ball down near the five here. Cue ball kind of comes back to where it is right now.
think the seven's going to cover the three there. Three got just below the five, or if he does hit the three, the combo's not, not wired into the corner. It might go. But it's not automatic. Yeah, he's not. Oh, he has a window between the seven ten. Look at this all in shot here. Trying to long bank. Can you even see the three? Yeah. I wouldn't think so, but it called it called the long bank in the corner. Oh, a swerve to a long bank. That was aggressive. But he knew if he kicked at it, he wasn't going to make the five anyway. So I tried just tr tried an option where he tried to make it directly in the pocket. He was really trying. Nice spin on the ball to hit it as good as he did. Yeah, swerve bank, tough yeah. shot. He's going around the seven for position on the side pocket for the four. Kazakis is still in this match, right? I, mean, you know, he's, he's I think so. He's only a game behind. He can tie things up at uh, two apiece. Yeah. Be breaking in the fifth rack. Natural angle here, back to the five. Chose to try to get straighter on the five. Probably shoot the six in the long pocket now. Kazakis likes these kind of simple patterns for position, you know, just move the cue ball, kind of kind of like how the Asian players play, move the cue ball a little less, take take less chances. Take a little longer shot as long as the line's right. Mm -hmm. Conservative pattern play overall. But it works. I mean, former WPA number one in the world. Going to draw this ball out two rails, but a right spin. Help cut to 10. All level. They've traded punches. Every other game. And tied it to. What do we have coming up tonight? Eight o'clock. Oh, gonna be we've the, got uh, a match for you coming up yeah. tonight. If you guys are out there, got the winner of twice of this event, Aloysius Yap, versus one of the hottest players. He's playing the best pool of his life, I think. It's Tyler Steyer. I agree. Yeah, he's really had some good results in the last three months. Yeah, he had a great Texas Open. He's he had a great match last night against Roland Garcia. Nice. Got uh, second at hard times. There was a, mm -hmm. that was like a hundred and seventy five player field too. Both of those matches were against Shane, the Texas Open and Hard That's Times. Right. Yeah. I think Shane got third at the Texas Open and uh Patsura got second. He ended up beating Patsura exactly. in the final. Yeah, but Shane was near the end. But two players were near the end of Big fields. Rare to see. Steyer played Shane, what was it, to... In the winner's side in final. In the winner's side final, yeah. And it was real close. Uh, I want to... It was Hill Hill. It was, yeah. Yeah, and Shane came from behind and took a game ahead. And then Tyler was able to uh, take that and uh, the last rack. Okay. Ooh. Big break. There goes the eight. So there's a ball made. Now where does the one ball go? Is it going to snow? It does not sit up, but... Uh, Roberto didn't even see the eight go in. Don't tell me Alex didn't either. Are we allowed to say something here? Uh, oh, dear. Oh, my. Oh, Eight goodness. balls in. Can the refs uh, the say referee, something? The referee's, referee's got to say in. something. Yeah. yeah. Nobody saw the corner ball yeah. go in. It was, <laughs> hit, it was hidden by the rack. Uh, I, Angela, our timekeeper... Uh, the, uh, actually pointed it out to the referee and uh, let the players know. 
Now they're having a little fun with this. Stay out of the game. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen that. Uh, it's it's I, I can't recall it. Yeah, because Lacus is just back, just went back to his chair, and Gomez stepped right up. I can see why Gomez did not see the eight sitting down there. Yeah, well, on the and far even, side of the table, and even Alex, he yeah. couldn't see through the rack, and the ball just went directly in. That ball doesn't usually go directly in the corner. Nice two-way shot. Yep. Trying to think of a kick-safe option here. He could go three rails at it. One, there's enough blockers on the table that one or two rails might be okay here too. I think I like the two rail option, going right past that four into the bottom rail and into the side rail. Looks like he's going one, like all offense, just trying to kick it in, or maybe if he hits the left side of it, the cue ball comes to the side rail and ends up behind the two ten. Yeah, he just kind of went aggressive at that one. Tough to tell if he's going to be able to hit it thin enough to cut it in. Cue ball be really loose if he tries that. Probably going to be a save here. Trying to get the cue ball behind the 4-5. It might be too straight for that. He might have to, you know, elevate uh, to avoid the double hit. Yeah, he's shooting away from it, so he should yeah. be okay. Playing safe behind the 4-5. Oh, too hard. They barely slow up. They're both looking at it close. Comes the jump cue. And he's got enough of it that he's going to either try some kind of swerve or play off the left edge. No, he's going to the jump cue. So the cue ball is going to track to the left here. Got to draw it. Make sure you don't go behind the nine. I'm sure he will. He will never get perfect on the two, but he will have some kind of shot if he, if he makes the one and draws it enough. Nice shot, but he didn't draw it enough. Hmm. That's a two rail kick here. Oh, he's got it. He's got the right edge of the two, so he's going to try to cross bank it. Nice thing about this is the cue ball is going to stay on the right side of the table over into a positions where the th yeah. you could possibly pocket the three as well. Got short of it, but he's he's playing that side of it. He knows the two has a chance to go safe if he goes short of it, and that's exactly what happened. Kind of had elements of the cue ball getting in near the three six as well. Great two way shot there. It's gonna have to draw at this. Called the two in the corner. Oh, that was awfully close, but yeah. So first opening in this rack. Leo the balls looks reasonable. Three to the four, I'd say, is the toughest shot. If he gets the cue ball on the right side of the table, he can naturally track it back on the right side of the table again. Shoot the four in the same pocket as the two. Kind of surprised he's he went. Go a little. Yeah, he's, he got perfect. Kind of surprised he went forward there. I was thinking of a draw over to the right side rail. Uh, I, I like what he did. I just uh, thought he hit it a little too light. Yeah, he's crossing the angle, floating a little bit. but yeah, Coming across the line. Yeah, he just liked his feel on that shot, I guess. He does have good speed for those kinds of shots. Oh, definitely. It's Finesse game. This is another finesse shot right here. Watch how slowly he takes the cue back. After his pause, just watch how slow he takes it back. Mm -hmm. 
He kind of stuttered there, didn't he? He did, yeah, and he, yeah. Usually, he usually doesn't, actually. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. But yeah, that's a that's something you look for in a lot of the top players. Bringing the cue back slow, pause at the end of the backstroke, smooth forward stroke delivery. That's a good recipe for success a lot of the time. Sure is. That long pause and then just slowly back. He's he's stuttering a little bit on his stroke. I see it twice. Yeah. Did I did I notice? That's the first time I've ever noticed that. I haven't him. really noticed. He's usually it very smooth. Yeah. He did it again. Yeah, Roberto is a predator sponsored player. That is a nice predator he's playing with. Kind of favor the side here. Could play corner. You should favor the side on shots like this. Shooting into the closest pocket is always a good idea. Good rack. Stayed in line there. Key was the three, two to the three. Played that nicely. Stayed in line for the rest of the rack. Yeah, and this set, neither player has won a game. Uh, two games in a row. They've exchanged punches the whole time. Roberto started out with a win. Here comes Alex and Roberto and then Alex. And guess who just won that last game? Well, it keeps going like this. It'll be Roberto 4-3. Set. Alex needs this. He's got to have it. Ref taking a little extra time on the rack here. There's going to be a break at 5 o'clock. There's going to be a 6.30 round, an 8 o'clock round. Two more rounds of play today. And action coming all the way throughout the weekend. Full set of matches on Friday, Saturday, and women's finals and semifinals on Sunday. Well, the difference so far in this, in this, ma in this set excuse me, has been a foul by Alex. They've both made 25 balls. Uh, Roberto has missed four. Alex has missed three. But Roberto's only had one foul to Alex's two. Okay. Yeah. Pretty sim similar stat lines, yeah. but yeah, th those foul stat lines are, are big because you get ball in hand. One of them was the cue ball running through the eight that one time. That was mm -hmm. kind of a weird one. Alex has a chance here. Three passes the eight. Everything else is in the open. Nice straight stroke there. Had to hit that one at high speed to get the cue ball off the rail. Pocketed it right in the heart. Well, a few shots right here. Yeah, it's going to be okay. It's a pretty natural angle. Track the cue ball between the 7, 10, maybe even come above the 7. He needs angle to get back for the 5 anyways. Got to finish this off. Yeah, he's gonna have to. He's gonna have to leave himself with some angle on the five. Probably be going three rails forward towards the six. Ooh, cue ball came off pretty fast off that rail. Still barely okay. Can 
track it back. Yeah, see, he's almost grabbing the rail there. Rail just caught a fast spot. Good shot, good recovery. He's back in line right away. Cue ball's on the right side of the six, so we can track the uh, track the cue ball towards the seven in the side here. Headed right towards Hill Hill. Alex breaking. Make him a small favorite. But as you said, they've the breakers lost every rack. They've traded they've traded racks, right? So the breakers lost exactly. every rack. Yeah. Which would be the case here if Alex gets out, and there's no reason he shouldn't. I feel like Alex is going to stick to the mi middle of the table. I mean, that's his game plan. I mean, if he... If you see anyone breaking from the middle, they've obviously practiced that break. It's a tougher break to execute. And uh, I think he's made balls on a couple. He just hasn't got a shot on the first ball. Well, he's only broke twice. So. There we go. We're yeah. tied at three in a race to four. And as you said, in this set, no one has won their break. Alex has to. Mm -hmm. He wants to stay in this match and send it to a shootout. What a time for a break and run. I mean, yeah. No, it, it's this format is... So Always exciting. You know? Oh, exactly. That yeah. that second set is so fast to get back in. You're never out of the set. Right. How many times I I can't tell you how many times I've you know been doing commentary for for this format here with Predator, and uh, it's it's three zero and all of a sudden it's tied at three and you're breaking for the set mm -hmm. and send it to a shootout or uh, one game to see if there's a shootout game. or not. Yeah, and, and, exactly. You know, so sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't, but there's always an element of you know, we want to watch the next game, right? No, we just don't want to see it end, especially when you don't want either player to lose. Yeah. Or, you know. It's... Oh, hit it good, but the rack didn't spread how he wanted. That's a tough oh. spread there. Hit, hit it real good, but got it. Again, got a bunch up of five balls near the right corner pocket here. I think the two passes the seven in the left corner. Uh, he's looking at it. Let's just look at it. Let's read his body language. I think it does. And I think there there is a, a weaving track where you take the cube the cue ball between the seven ten down to the short rail between the seven ten. Can you get there? I think it's thin enough. Does he, does he have, oh, he's going to cut it in the side. Yeah, I'm oh, talking I got about you. Side, I got yeah. you. Okay. I'm not sure if he can hold it. I guess maybe he can. Yeah, he can, especially on this clock. Oh, didn't want to oh. nick it. If he would have <laughs> nicked it, he wouldn't have <laughs> had a shot. He would, exactly. Tent. Uh, he's like not you happy really, about something. Yeah, well, I feel like you can't really draw this one enough to just kind of go over to the side rail and and not hitting hit, hit any other balls. He might be just thick enough that he can. He's going to leave himself distance on the three, but yeah. I think he's going to have to accept that. Good shot. Very nice shot. He can get through the rack now. Yeah, he's got to stop. Uh, does he have the angle get to the side pocket, to the side rail? Yeah, uh, yes, he does. He's yeah, okay. He does. Even, stun shot. even stopping it is okay here. Movement from the five to the six, but the six is pretty near the corner. Seven only pockets in the left corner pocket. He'll be thinking about that. Depending on how he ends up on the six, he could consider the combo because it's lined up pretty well towards the pocket. Of 
think something that could get him. Oh, some something that could get him here is he's yeah. going to be coming around two rails, and then the cue ball is going to be backing into the ten. Yeah, see, he tried to hold it there one rail. That's a smart play. Good play. Because he needed angle to get back up towards the six without running into the ten. Right. Just above the side pocket, and he's fine. Got below it. I like getting below these types of balls. Do you? And you just lay it on the rail there so that you can just run over to it. Yep. And he's perfect angle here to okay. draw the cue ball on the other side. Fair bit of right spin. Make sure the cue ball tracks wide enough. Close to an overhead. But perfect. Good shot. I think the cue ball is tracking on the right just a little bit here, which helps him. Get on the left side of the table, leading to the left side of the nine. Looks like more of a draw play, straight back draw, which is fine too. Ooh, got in between here. Let up on his stroke just a bit there. Well, a good draw stroke here. He can just come right back across, or he can put some center left and go two rails towards the nine. Yeah, two or three rails. Yeah. It's close. Whether he hits the left side or not, it's I'd irrelevant. I'd kind of favor the draw on right, but it's it's personal preference, you know. If hey, you, I'd favor I, the I draw on right because it's outside. With, I think he'll go with that. Yeah. Good shot. Kill stroke here. I don't think he'll come across two rails. Kind of a drag kill stroke. Make the pocket bigger with that type of speed. Hit. And that should about do it for this match. Keep in mind, come back here at 8 o'clock tonight. We should have. There's a 6 30 round. 6 30 well. match. Yeah. But we got a great one and a big one coming for you at 8 p.m. Roberto Gomez and Alex Kazaki's put on a good show for you guys. Gomez moves on. Alex is now out. This is George Teachea. And Mr. Eric Hoffelson. Okay, guys, Hortis, thanks for tuning Hortis, in. Excuse yeah, me, I no got problem. that wrong. No problem. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next round.